Alrighty guys, welcome back to a brand new video. For the people that are new, my name is Ryan Amancio. I've been doing GNCC since I'm 65, like, since I was 7. And um, today I'm 14, so basically half of my life on uh, GNCC. But anyway, we are here at Big Buck, probably the most uh, popular round besides Iron Man. And uh, today was a little bit different. So we actually started racing on Saturday at 4 p.m. instead of Sunday at 8 a.m. And that's just because a lot of people uh, were going to Big Bucks and they wouldn't be able to fit everyone. So they ended up taking the Super Minis, which is me, um, changed it to Saturday after the Pro Quads. And then they separated the AM race in half so that it wouldn't be too hectic. But anyway, we get off here to a really good start, third place. Um, so I'm where I need to be. And all I gotta do now is just be a little bit patient and uh, wait for my next move but first first start of the GNCC uh, National Cross Country Race we are here at Union South Carolina I was at the Shoals which was like an hour away from here I was at the Shoals for like the past four days before this so I was feeling pretty good on the bike we did a little bit of adjustments and uh, ended up changing my, my bars as well handlebars and a little bit of things on the suspension but this race here was pretty hectic as you guys will see here pretty soon uh, how I uh, was able to make it to the lead and uh, I made some quite, quite a few mistakes actually but uh, luckily it didn't cost me much and I was still able to stay out front so in first place that is Jacob Volan and in second place is Brody Amos. I'm in third and Austin Sakinikis is in fourth. So we pretty much all stay together for the first lap. I'm pretty sure by the end of first lap uh, we all checked in within 10 seconds the top four. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not counting this lap because we went through the finish off the start as well. We were all within like 10 seconds, but um, the actual first lap, we were all top four was probably within 10 seconds of each other. So we were pretty close off the, off the beginning. So you can see Brody here trying to make some moves, try to cut in under Jacob Bolin, uh, but he did not let that happen. But as you see here, they forgot to take the ribbon out, so we just ended up breaking this ribbon off the start. I mean, off the finish, sorry. And as you guys will see here pretty soon, uh, Brody goes to the outside, I get pretty close to him, and the ribbon goes and gets stuck in my front tire, and it stays there for the whole race. That didn't affect me in anything, though. But I would like to explain on what happened because uh, I was a little confused on where that came from. And after I saw the GoPro video, I, I knew where it came from. But Jacob Bolin with a little mistake there, Brody Ambos uh, was able to get by him. And here I pushed the issue a little bit and uh, was able to get by him as well. Put me in second, Brody in first, and Austin Sakinikis, he made his way into third. Uh, I'm pretty sure right now he's in third. I think Jed. Jacob just let us all by, but now the real race begins. And going through the finish line as well, uh, the guy that was like using the sponge to clean off the numbers off of the helmet, he got water in. Um, he got water in my like th tear offs. So you guys will see here pretty soon. I uh, start uh, taking off a lot of tear offs at once and. I ended up taking off my goggles as soon as I made it into the lead. For this race, I really want to give a big thanks to uh, TF Racing Suspension, uh, Tom Fleeman. He's been helping me out a lot lately with suspension, and he got me pretty dialed for this race. And I want to give a big thanks to Carl from Moose Racing. Uh, he hooked me up with some really fresh gear. Uh, made me look good throughout this whole weekend, so I want to give a big thanks to him. You saw that was the first tear off down. Um, as the water kept going down uh, through my tear offs, it was getting harder and harder for me to see. 
it was like all becoming blurry, but I knew I couldn't take it off behind Brody because um, he would roost me quite a bit, and I knew I wouldn't be able to get by him. So going through this race, uh, I was pretty prepared. Uh, the Carolina XC race was helping me stay in shape as well and uh, stay in that racing form. So I would recommend for everyone that um, that doing GNCC or any racing at all uh, to do Carolina XC. It's the closest to like a GNCC and it's over the winter because um, I'm from New England, in Connecticut, so no racing around here during the winter and it's usually like snow all over the place as well over the winter but uh, I was able to do Carolina XC I did end up winning uh, the Super Mini class and the Open B class at Carolina XC so that would be a great place for you to start uh, warming up and uh, get back in that racing shape So at this point of the race, uh, we're still in the first lap, I think we're like halfway through the track. I uh, started to get a little bit impatient and started to not follow Brody almost because, you know the saying, if you're following someone, uh, you won't be able to get by him. But uh, I started taking different lines here pretty soon and uh, I'm going to start to force the issue in just a little bit as well. But. I also want to give a big thanks to uh, Rodrigo, Thiago, Joselto, and Inaki. Uh, all the Brazilian group, they helped me out a lot for this first race. They were out there cheering me on and just helping me. But uh, yeah, I mean, I really do appreciate everyone that uh, came, came along on my side this year. And all the people that got videos and pictures of me, I just want to give a big thanks to them as well. And, uh, yeah, so here, um, I start to take this different line. Brody, he checks up here pretty soon to take this line and uh, right here. And I take this outside line. And right around here, I take this outside, he takes this inside. I just don't want to follow him because if he makes any mistake at all, um, I wouldn't be bobbled up with him. Uh, I started to see that he start starting to ride over his head a little bit. So here, just taking different lines, just trying to be smooth. It's only the first lap, no need to rush anything. But I was wanting to get into the lead as fast as I could and just try to open up a gap. Because I was also getting pit boards that Mason Rayner from YT2 was catching up to me. And I'm pretty sure by the first lap, he was already in second. Um, on time adjustment and I think it was like 10 seconds off me or something but here we go so Brody take this inside I take this outside and I cut in right here it's like a straight straight shot and Brody he uh, got caught up in that corner and that little tiny mistake that he made uh, I was able to get it around him putting me into the lead and now all I gotta do is just put my head down and charge For this race as well, I'm pretty, um, I know I took down some lappers, and I know a lapper took me out as well, but I do want to say uh, I'm sorry to anyone that I accidentally took them down or maybe just hit them, but um, at, the, at the point I am now, at the level I am now, um, I really can't lose any time at all behind any lappers. Uh, I did end up losing a race in 2021. 20, um, I ended up losing a race of 3 milliseconds. So, uh, at this point, we really can't lose any time at all. You guys saw there, Brody Amos in second, also second, Nikas in third. Um, so, they were all pretty close. And through this first lap here, they were within 4 seconds of me. 2 seconds. Uh, Brody was behind me, and then Austin was a good two seconds behind him. But this lap, I put down this heater for these next two laps, and I was able to open up to a 40 second gap. And uh, I opened up as well the overall on time adjustment. People scattering all over the place right there. And it's kind of weird now that uh, 
now I'm like the first person on the track, so I get a pretty clear track for like the first first half a lap or so, and um, it's kind of cool, you know, like everyone just like waiting on the leaders, and I'm like the leader, so it's I don't know, I think it's pretty cool, and also I hit lappers first, so um, lappers they uh, could be good, could be bad for you. Because since you are the first one, they would probably hold you up a little bit more. And then, for the second place rider, they would probably open up faster. There was Frank Messina right there cheering me on at this straightaway. This probably was my favorite part of the track, if I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm not a fan of hard pack at all. Uh, I didn't really like this track much, but I, I made it work. So that is for my first lap. First lapper. <laughs> uh, right there. The 127 on the 65. And uh, I'm pretty sure I start to catch into some lap traffic pretty soon as well. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it was pretty straightforward race. I put myself in a great position in the third off the start, and then stayed in second for the like, first lap. And I was able to pass Brody for the lead with his little mistake. And from there, no more mistakes. And uh, I'm pretty sure I have no goggles on. Had no goggles for the whole race because um, I don't know why it was just really dark for me when I had goggles on so uh, I just stuck with no goggles and do I regret that? no but it was sure painful um, cause all the like roosts and stuff so by the end of this race I was looking like I was on I looked like I was high <laughs> but um, all in all, it was a really good race. Had a lot of fun. As you see here, this was third lap. I stopped for uh, goggles because the first goggles I thought I couldn't really see well because it was uh, there's water in my my tear offs. But uh, more towards the end of this lap, I ended up taking them off because I started making some silly mistakes that I shouldn't have been doing. Mainly because I couldn't see where I was uh, going. I couldn't see stuff on the ground. Right there I dropped the water bottle, and uh, you see it's still on the bike, and as I sit down here, I sat down on the water bottle, which threw me off a little bit. It was, eventually uh, fell off, but, man, was this a fun race, I worked my butt off all uh, winter for this, and uh, I think I surprised a few people, I don't think people were expecting me to come out uh, hitting this hard, but... Uh, I still got to work on a few things. I still made a few mistakes here and there. And also, the GoPro ended up dying at one hour, so I missed the, the last two laps, unfortunately. But for the next race, that won't happen. I, I just used the wrong battery for the GoPro. But anyway, we're coming down here to the end. Uh, I do want to give a big thanks to Auntie and Timmy from KTM. Uh, for staying on my side this year and working with me and also it was a cool thing as well uh, at the end of all this racing and everything KTM ended up posting me on their Instagram story which will be at the end of this video you guys will see here pretty soon here's the lappers uh, it would the rush would really hurt because keep in mind I didn't have any goggles on so at this point I didn't have any goggles a lot of people, I know it's dangerous not having goggles, and I would not recommend uh, not having goggles on. But, like I said, I really could not see with goggles on, and it was just affecting me quite a bit, so I just had to deal with it. But anyway, thank you guys so much for uh, watching this video. If you guys did enjoy, please like and subscribe. Uh, let me know how was this video. I worked pretty hard on this video as well, but uh, that would be it for me. Uh, see you guys next video at Florida. Give him some room here. Alright, Ryan, shake it good.